Welcome back to the Carefree Kitchen. I'm Jill, and today I'm so excited to share this recipe with you. This is my recipe for homemade French bread. This recipe only takes a few ingredients, and they're ingredients you probably already have in your pantry, and even the beginner can make this French bread. Okay, here are my ingredients. I have six cups of flour. I may only need five and a half, but I will show you how to tell. I have a little bit of salt. I have some warm water, and this is just barely warm on my wrist. Right now it's at about the two cup mark. So what I want to do is I want to bring it up so the bottom line of the water is parallel with that line. So I don't want the top lip, I want the bottom part of the bubble. So right about there, two and a half cups of warm water. And that's between 95 and 110 degrees. If you're getting pretty technical, but a little bit warm to your wrist works great. Okay, and then I have just like two tablespoons of sugar and a tablespoon of yeast. I'm gonna use this egg for the egg wash on the top. And then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt, just regular sea salt. Okay, so in my mixing bowl, I'm gonna take my two cups of water, add that to the mixing bowl, and you don't really have to wait a long time on this. I know my yeast is good. If you're wondering, you probably need to proof your yeast, your yeast and I'll have a little bit of information on that on the printable recipe if you need that. Okay, so here's the water and the sugar and the yeast, and you just wanna mix this to be sure your yeast is dissolved. Put that back on. Okay, and now I'm going to add about half of my flour. So, I know I'm not going to be needing more than this, so I have my six cups in there, and I'm just gonna add that. Then I have, very non-technical, about a teaspoon of salt, and now I will lift this up and just turn it on low speed here and let it do its work here for just a couple minutes. Get that all nice and mixed in. Okay, and before I get too much further, I'm also going to add, see if I can do this one-handed, about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm just going to guess that. About a tablespoon and mix that baby up. And now I'm going to add a little bit more flour, leaving about a cup or so in my container. Just bring that back up and let it do its thing. Okay, I'm gonna let this mix for about two minutes. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this flour. I don't wanna add it all. We wanna add maybe a half a cup at a time and then let it mix some more. You can see it's picking up all the flour there on the sides of the bowl. And we want to add flour until it just starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. And that's how you know that you have enough flour in your dough. But we want to keep mixing to make sure that it's all really well incorporated and mixed in. All right, here you can see that a lot of the flour has come away from the edge of the bowl, but it's not quite done. And if you are doing this by hand, just follow the same process and keep on mixing, keep on kneading your dough. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. And it's okay if it sticks a little bit on the bottom of the bowl, but all of this along here, we want that to be picked up by the dough ball. And that will give us the right consistency. Like right now, this is just way too doughy. All right, now take a look at this one. See, it's picked up all of that flour. And I just have a little bit left here in the bowl and I'm not going to need that. This looks perfect. Now, I'm going to just let this knead for about 90 seconds or two minutes. And if you're doing this by hand, you'll probably have to knead it for three or four or five minutes until it's really elastic -y and it's not super sticky. All right, it's been kneading for about 90 seconds, maybe two minutes. Look at that, that is some perfect dough right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to let this sit. I just have a little bit of a cloth here. I'm gonna cover it 
and leave it in this warm spot here for about 20 minutes and then we'll shape it into the lobes. All right, so this is the fun part. Um, here's my dough and as you can see, it has risen to be a little more than double. You don't need to let it rise quite this long, but I had a couple other things I had to do so it rose a little bit longer. Actually, before I get started any, with anything more, I'm gonna to talk to you about bread pans. So, uh, this is what I usually use. Just a large baking sheet for my bread pan for um, French bread, but this is a fancy French bread pan. This is like what they would use in a bakery. Um, have you ever noticed that there's like kind of a round bottom to the French bread? Well, this is the kind of French bread pan that they use. And it's not necessary to use this. It does hold its shape just a little bit better. Um, so, I don't know, maybe I'll make one in this one and then one in that one, you can kind of tell if it's worth your time and kitchen space to keep an actual French bread pan in your kitchen. But anyways, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray these with non-stick cooking spray and then we'll get started on rolling out our French bread dough. Uh, you can use oil or the non-stick cooking spray. Either works fine. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my counter is really clean and dry. and cause a lot more mess than you need if it's not dry. And then I'll just sprinkle out some flour. Just use your hands and just pull it on out of there. Okay. And then I like to keep a sharp knife handy and just roll it around in the flour a little bit so it will, won't be sticky. And then I'm just going to eyeball it here and you can weigh this if you really want to know, but um, just cut that in half. Okay, and then since this is a sticky side, I'll just get it in a little bit of flour. You don't want to work the dough too much, but just enough to keep the flour kind of from making your hands really sticky. Okay, so you want to keep your flour on the surface here and I'm just going to tuck my ends under here because I want a nice smooth loaf. And then if you'll get a little bit of flour and put it on your rolling pin and then just kind of work in the middle and pull down and over here. And you're gonna see a lot of little bubbles popping and that's totally normal. We want our bread dough to be about 14 inches long in kind of a rectangle. So just work it for a little bit. And actually, if it gets too stiff, you can just set this aside here and work with the other one. Again, moving from the middle and just rolling it out. Okay, I'll put that aside and work with this one here for a minute. Okay, that is about right. So, now for the fun part. This is about rectangular, if you can see it there. You know, I would say 12 inches is probably that, so we're about 14 inches. So, I'm gonna turn it over, and you wanna use the smoothest side to be the outside of your French bread. So this is the rough side and I'm just going to roll this out here. It's nice and long and smooth. I'm just going to put this right in here. And then I'm going to tuck my ends in. And on this side, do you see how it has that roll there? I want to just tuck that in. And as it rises, it will get rid of the separation from that little bit of flour. It will just kind of absorb it. There we go. And we will score it here in just a minute. Okay, we've got another nice little rectangle here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm actually gonna use this side for my outside. Roll it up kind of tight there. And then throw it on here and again, tuck the ends in again. It's okay if it rolls over, just tuck it all in. And try to make it all symmetrical in the size, the width, and also the length. Okay, as you can see, I've got this nice long 
piece of gel on my pan here, and I just have a nice sharp knife. Now I'm going to score this about four times, and you don't need to go very deep, but if you have a sharp knife, it's gonna be perfect. So, there we are. There's the scored French bread. And then I will also do this to my other one. And again, you just do it kind of on a diagonal. And I'm only gonna do three on that one. There we go, just like that. Okay, so the next step in this is to make an egg wash. And I just have a little bowl here. I'm gonna crack one egg, add a tablespoon of water, and then whisk it up. And you can also make an egg wash with just egg whites. I actually like to do the egg yolk with it for French bread because it gives it a nice, really rich color. There we go, that's all ready there. And then I just use a pastry brush and just brush it all along the sides and inside of your score marks. Just lightly coat everything. Okay, and as you can see, this is already starting to rise. Just brush this whole thing. All right, I've just got this bread here sitting on my counter, and I will let it rise until it's about double, which will probably be about 30 minutes. And then we're gonna bake it, and it will be good to go. You can also add sesame seeds to the top of this, or shredded cheese like Parmesan or Asiago to have it like a cheese crusted bread or an herb crusted bread. Just chop up some of your favorite herbs. Here is the bread and it's all nice and risen. Okay, I'm gonna bake this in a 375 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes or until it's golden brown. And I'm just gonna pop that in there. Okay guys, I just have to show you how pretty this is. Take a look at that. It's been baking for about 32 minutes. <gasps> so pretty. Okay, and now I have my other pan I'm gonna put in there. And one thing I forgot to share that I did last time, if you just throw in a few ice cubes on the bottom of the oven tray there, the moisture will help get a nice thick and crispy crust to your French bread. All right, so again in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. And if I would have had both of the loaves on here, I would have just done this once, but since I had two pans, I couldn't fit them in my oven. So anyways, see you in 30 minutes. Okay, check out these two loaves of French bread. I think they turned out so pretty. It's nice and crusty, just like the French bread you would buy in a bakery. And this is the one that was made with the French loaf pan. But look, they are just about the same height. This one is maybe just a little bit taller, but this one also has a great shape to it and a beautiful color. Okay, so should we dive into this and see what it looks like on the inside? Has that nice thick crust on the outside. How is that for some amazing soft and spongy on the inside? And then of course it's crusty and chewy on the outside. Add a little bit of butter to this. This is the perfect side to any Italian meal. That is some really nice French bread. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode at the Carefree Kitchen. Be sure to follow me on social media if you want more amazing recipes like this French bread. I've got lots on my website at thecarefreekitchen.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye! Now, this recipe only takes a few ingredients. It does take a little bit of time, but this is a really easy recipe, and even the beginner can make this French bread.